Can I make a difference in 2019? Yes. That's, that's a good question, and I hope that everybody has that answer, but I'd like to offer maybe some information to, to develop that, that answer for today. So let's take a good look at who we are and where we are in the shadow of this new year of 2019. Who we are can be defined by our non-denominational doctrine and beliefs. We are the children of God. Uh, we have been bought with the blood of God's Son, and until He returns to bring us to heaven, and that will be with Him at the last day of the Lord. We're Christians only, but not the only Christians. I, just, I, I think I like to define myself as one of those um, mix-and-match kind of guys. You know, I'm, I can go into any church because I am a Christian. I bring the Spirit of Christ in with me. And it uh, doesn't always matter what they believe. It's, it's me coming into their midst and worshiping Almighty God. Because let's face it, we're, we, none of us are going to agree on everything. That's just not going to happen, ever. I, no church is going to have everybody 100% in line unless they're beat up by the pastor and abused and made to, to quote things and say things exactly as he believes them. I don't believe that's the way it is. I believe you need a relationship with Jesus that is built on your understanding of him and your understanding of the scriptures. We come together in unity under him. But we are a church that is built on the mistakes and discoveries of our spiritual ancestors. We didn't just come from nowhere. We come from somewhere. We have been trained or not trained in our youth. And that brings us to a, a, the same place, though, today. We come from a long line of seekers who know the Bible to be the inspired word of God and the true book to find the will of God for our personal lives. Our conversations with the Lord begin with reading his word and then speaking prayers to him of our wants and our needs as his children. This is basic. As we search the scriptures for direction, we find stories of the champions of God who have done great things for God that inspire us even today. One champion of God that I want to look at today is the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> this Apostle of Christ went out to plant many churches among the Gentiles or the non-Jewish nations. Paul was an outstanding missionary and still is a great inspiration to you and, and me and many today as, as well as through the ages. The inspiration for this sermon comes from this scripture found in Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. If you've got your Bibles, you can open them to that. I'm going to read it for you. It's up on the screen too. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Now that's the key verse that I'm going to focus in on, but it will be explained as we read on. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that is in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. I want to camp out in this section of Scripture on verse 12. Life is a journey. Amen? Our church life is also a journey. We look at ourselves today as people on a journey that begun here in this place in August as New Life Christian Church. Well, we're brand new. We're like babies. Uh, but this is just a small part of our total journey that's that's going to continue with the Lord. In fact, in looking over our whole year, 
of 2018, this part of our journey is just a, a quarter of that year, a little more than a quarter. Looking forward into this new year, I want to learn from the upsets and the difficult situations and be able to be like the Apostle Paul and say, but I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. You and I all should be able to say that, no matter what it is that has happened to us, that it is for the glory of Christ and the furtherance of the gospel. Can you all look back at this past year without any regrets? Can we look back and, and ask God why? Why, Lord? Oh, that famous question. Why did I have to experience upset and pain? Why did my favorite church close down or become different? Why do I have to live with my medical report, the results? Paul had been through a lot of adversity before he was brought to Rome, where he was placed on house arrest on his trial in the Supreme Court waiting for Caesar to, to judge his case. He'd been thrown into jail after being beaten just for preaching the word and for doing some healing and some miracles. He was, he was beaten up, thrown into jail where he, they found out that he was a Roman citizen. And from that point, the guards kind of got a little edgy about, we just beat up a Roman citizen and that's against the law. We might be in a lot of trouble. So let's get Paul over to, to plead his case in front of uh, one of the governors at that time. His, ne his name was Felix. And as Paul was brought before Felix, he was given a chance in front of this very important official to give his case for Christ. He was able to preach the gospel to someone who had no idea, who thought that the earth was millions of years old, who thought that something was, was uh, brought up on uh, Mount Olympus or whatever it was in, in the days of of the Roman Empire, the Greeks and the Romans kind of shared those gods, called them different names, but they had about the same story. And uh, they had little idols that they would keep, and, and they thought that was the power of God that was at their hands to be able to, to ask the gods for favors here and there. So he's before uh, Felix, and then Felix retires and hands it over to Festus. All this time, Paul's in jail. He's kind of, he's kind of going, wow, I, I want to... to uh, be, have my accusers come before me and, and be able to tell me what have I done wrong? Because he kept saying to all the authorities, I've not done anything wrong. You've got the wrong guy. They're lying and I'm telling the truth. Well, in order to, to have his audience with uh, Festus, the new guy who, who took Felix's place, then we find that, uh, that he called Agrippa, the king of, of uh, Israel, over to, to uh, listen to this apostle Paul. He says, I don't know what's going on, but this guy, he makes a lot of sense, and he really hasn't done anything according to our laws. He's absolutely innocent. I can't hold him any longer without it looking bad for me. And so he's explaining to King Agrippa, you listen to him. Maybe he's done some religious thing wrong that, that you need to find him in, in contempt. That's, maybe that's what this is all about. So the King Agrippa did listen to Paul's story, and he, he was surprised, I guess, to know about this, this man, Jesus, who had been killed, and Agrippa knew of the killing of Jesus, and to know that he is the Christ. It was quite astounding, and, and the Bible says that uh, Paul almost uh, convinced King Agrippa to be a Christian. He almost got him to the point where he could accept the truth and get rid of the myth and the lie. We acknowledge in Romans 8, 28, Paul also wrote this to the, to the Roman church. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And again, in Philippians, a little later than chapter 1, chapter 3, 12 through 14, not, all, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but Paul says, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus also laid hold of me. 
Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. As Paul writes these words in his letter to the church in Philippi, he says to forget the things that are behind. Is that easy for you? I sometimes have a hard time forgetting stuff that I consider to be negative toward me or, or negative to, toward the church or negative toward the Lord, negative to my family members and friends. It is my goal to not let the past haunt me or slow me down in my walk with the Lord. There are these three to live in. Number one, the past. Number two, the present. And number three, the future. There was a husband that ran into my office some years ago. He was ranting and raving uh, that I had counseled uh, he and his wife uh, over some issues. And he came in to me. He said, um, my wife is historical. I'm sick of it. And he just kept saying, she's so historical. And I said, calm down, calm down. Just have a seat. Let's talk about this. So as he sat down, I, I just said, something has happened. Yes, my wife is historical. I said, don't you mean hysterical? Because that makes more sense to me. He says, no, she's historical. She keeps dragging up everything from the past. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can safely say that those that tend to remain in the past where old hurts go unresolved are also the ones who have a hard time forgiving, who do not forgive the past is the past. It should always remain a time to reflect on lessons learned. But if it is still unforgiven, then the person hurt most by unforgiveness is not the one who did the harm. It is the one who holds on to the hurt. We have the power within us to resolve the past conflicts. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So ask yourself, what would Jesus do? I remind myself of the band around here. What would Jesus do? Living in the present is the best, I think. If we were to live totally for the present, then I may not prepare for the future. In order to prepare best for the future, I need lessons from the past to guide me on my path into the unknown. Because you know the future is unknown. He knows my future. I don't get to have it but unfolded day by day. Living in the present does not mean that we live with the excuses from the past. I was upside down in a remodeling job one year working for this doctor and there was a lot of changes that went through this 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 time and uh, I tried to keep up with it and if you know anything about the construction business uh, in a remodeling contract there's a lot of unknowns and so as you continue in the work you discover that oh this wasn't included in the original bid. We have to come back and you have to give me a little more money to do this because this, I didn't know this was here. And so that happened uh, in a, in a $100,000 remodeling contract. There was a 100,000 more in change orders. Give you an idea of the scope. It was, a, it was enormous. It was incredible how many change orders. Well, the, the amount of profit and, and, uh, and overhead expense that you're allowed in a change order is very minimal. So it all supposes that you made a lot of money up here on that first part of the contract to be able to, to afford to do it for almost nothing but cost on the back end. Well, there was so much of it that uh, at the end of the job, uh, I had done more work and some of the change orders didn't get processed. And I said, I, I, need, I need this money now. I'm, I've, I've finished the job. It's a beautiful job. Everybody agreed. The guy says, I'm not paying you the money. And so, so why wouldn't you pay me the money? We did the work. We did, we did the job. Uh, these change orders, they, they exhausted me. But we got done, and I, I owe some money, and you owe me that money. Well, I, every time after that, and it, was, it, it did, never did turn into a court battle, but it did turn into an excuse for me to tell anybody that I owed money to because I didn't get paid, that I, as soon as I take care of this, I'll take care of you. I just was blaming the past for what my present was requiring of me, and it didn't look good for my future. One day, I just stood there, and I remember thinking, 
I can't keep doing this. I'm lying to these people. I don't know if this guy's ever going to pay me. I need to take responsibility today for the debt that I owe these people, irregardless of what he owes me. And at that point in time, I became free. I became free to be able to negotiate a new deal with the new people. I became free of, of the, uh, I didn't forgive the debt as, as much as uh, I gave the debt um, time to resolve itself without me hanging on to it. If it ever came, it came. Thank you, Lord. But if it, if it didn't come, thank you, Lord. I've got a future. I've got a way to resolve the problems in my present without relying on the, the past broken stuff of the past. The future is in the hands of the Lord. People, it's dangerous to live only for the future because our journey in life takes some crazy detours sometimes. Amen? I mean, you know, you look at it as a man. I look back at 40, and, uh, you know, it's, it's got a fancy name, but I'm looking back in my rearview mirror, and I'm thinking, is this where I wanted to be? And, and I wasn't where I wanted to be. I, I, had a, I had a crisis, a midlife crisis. I'm not where I wanted to be. Somewhere in my past, I took a left, and I should have taken a right, or I took a right, and I should have gone straight. I think we all get there, and it doesn't have to be at age 40. It could be at age 22 or, or any, any age. Who's the oldest one in here? Never mind. Somewhere over 100. You could still look back and have, have regrets about taking the wrong turn and what you would do to change yourself around. If we make a plan and have no flexibility in changing courses as things change, then we tend to break and freeze up. Just tense up and can't do anything. I'm sure that the Apostle Paul did not plan on a death trip to Rome in defending himself against unjust charges from people who couldn't prove them anyway. But as the future for him unfolded, Paul used his circumstances to influence Romans for the cause of Christianity, for the cause of Christ. And he wrote encouraging letters from his from his chains, as he called them, to be able to be part of our New Testament to encourage us in our everyday walk of life, in our, in our present, to learn his attitude, being in chains under house arrest in Rome, awaiting. He didn't know what to expect on that. If you read Philippians at all, you know that to live is Christ and to die is, is gain. You, you win either way. We win either way. Our future is secure. We know where we will be in our future. But we can't just live there. We've got to live as Paul did in his present. I hope that no one here fears death. I mean the kind of fear that you would do anything, even evil, in order to avoid it. Oh, nobody fears death like that. In my, if my future is death, then I am expecting to see the object of my worship very soon. Got to look at it like that. Not an ending, but a beginning. If my fear is to die alone, then read the story of Lazarus and the rich man. You know, the poor scrubby one, the scabby one, where the angels came and carried him to paradise where he was whole and very well taken care of. Let us be brave as we live in our present circumstances, believing that the Lord is in charge and he knows what he is doing. Amen? He knows what he is doing. Let us go bravely into our future together without fear, but filled with the Spirit of the Lord and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way to go. We've got a bright future looking ahead into 2019. We are going to learn from the past mistakes of 2018 and not let them drag us down, but let them propel us in our new gained wisdom of what not to do. I love making mistakes. I am ashamed when I do something wrong, when I know the right thing to do, but when I do something wrong because I didn't know what else to do and I learned from it, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you. These are blessings from heaven. Blessings from heaven. Well, I don't know what your circumstance is here today, but we're going to call the, the Esperanzitas. <laughs> it's my new pet name for the, for the praise team. To go ahead and take your place up there, and I'm going to ask these folks, and, and you if you want me to, uh, a couple of hard questions. A couple of hard questions. I guess I, I've been told uh, in Preaching 101 that uh, unless you challenge the group, that you really haven't preached a, a lesson. And uh, I don't know, I, I'm kind of, I'm a born encourager. I like to encourage you all to do the right thing, to learn the right thing, to, to um, mimic the right people even. In this case, the Apostle Paul has really given us a great example of how to live one's life. Do you know the Apostle Paul used to stand at the feet of those that killed Christians just because they believed in Jesus Christ? Do you know they, they would, he would stand there with letters from the Sanhedrin, uh, and, and he would chase them down. It's, Paul even said he went out of town. He didn't just stay within the Jewish community. He went out of town to find them, knock on the door, and drag them into the, to the right county to be able to, to, to kill them. He carried that guilt in, into his Christianity. That was part of his, his uh, gospel rendition to all of the leaders was how he met Christ. How he, on the way, on the road to Damascus, that he met Jesus, and, and Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus. And then he knew. Now there's that time in everybody's life where you know you're going in the wrong direction and you need to go in the right direction. Every, every one of the Christians that, I have, that I've known has a story sort of like Paul's. It, it may not be exactly they were going out to kill Christians. It may not have been that they had any kind of authority at all. But something happened where in their normal road of a course of life, in their journey in life, that they came to a place where they knew there was more, that he is real that he was calling that person. Everybody's got a story where they knew in their heart that Jesus said, come and I'll make you fishers of men, or come. So the, the invitation this morning is for anyone here and in, in our custom, this is not a command of the Lord or in the Bible. We just think this is like the most emotional and spiritual opportunity for anybody to make a decision for the Lord, to, to follow him or to ask forgiveness from him or to ask prayers from the saints as we gather around those who have special needs. And we love doing that because guess what? We are brothers and sisters in Christ and we can do that and want to do that. So whatever your need is today, we're going to have the singer sing a song and I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to sing the song. And if you have a need, come up and grab me and tell me what your need is and we'll take care of that today or as soon as possible. And that, that is our promise to you. We're here for you whenever. Oh, you